हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज अर्पिता त्रिपाठी वेलकमिंग यू ऑल टू माय चैनल एंड योर वेरी ओन लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म द वर्ल्ड ऑफ केमिस्ट्री टुडे आई विल कंटिन्यू माय डिस्कशन फ्रॉम द लास्ट टॉपिक एटॉमिक स्ट्रक्चर सो कीप वाचिंग माय वीडियोस एंड टू गेट टू नो अबाउट माय लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स डू द नीडफुल इन दिस मॉड्यूल यू विल लर्न अबाउट थॉमसन्स प्लम पुडिंग मॉडल एंड Rutherford's gold foil experiment which led to the discovery of a nucleus of an atom so let's initiate the discussion are the charged particles arranged in any particular manner are the charged particles present throughout the atom or are they concentrated in one place to answer these questions let's recall once about the points we already know john dalton stated in his atomic theory that an atom is indivisible and indestructible however after that j j thomson conducted the experiment with the beams of particles in the cathode ray tube he found that the particles were attracted towards the positive terminal of the tube thomson concluded that the particles must be negatively charged and called them electrons electrons have negligible mass and charge of minus 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and then goldstein came upon positively charged radiations in a gas discharge which he termed as canal rays these radiations led to the discovery of protons mass of proton was found to be much more than the electrons and carried positive charge of plus 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb These discoveries made the scientists believe that an atom was divisible and made up of electrons and protons but they didn't know that how these protons and electrons were arranged within an atom they tried to understand this through various experiments as it was considered necessary to know about their arrangement so in 1904 J J Thomson proposed the first atomic model the plum pudding model it is a historical scientific models of the atom the plum pudding model is defined by electrons surrounded by a volume of positive charge like negatively charged plums embedded in a positively charged pudding the plum pudding is an english dessert similar to a blueberry muffin in thomson's plum pudding model of the atom the electrons were embedded in a uniform sphere of positive charge like blueberries stuck into a muffin hence the model got its name the plum pudding model this model was proposed soon after the discovery of electron but before the discovery of the atomic nucleus the model tried to explain two properties of atoms then known that the electrons are negatively charged particles and atoms have no net electric charge this figure shows that the positively charged sphere exerts force on the negatively charged electrons the direction of the net force on negatively charged electrons due to the positively charged sphere is towards the center of the sphere these negatively charged electrons repel each other and form the shells but this model was given up as it failed to explain the existence of some observed phenomena about the atom and so it was not accepted later in 1911 ernest rutherford a new zealand born british physicist carried out his now famous 
gold foil experiment to find the arrangement of electrons and protons in an atom. Now let's know about the experimental setup that Rutherford used. In his experimental setup, he used three most important things. The first is the alpha source enclosed in a lead box. Alpha source emits the alpha particles. Alpha particles are basically the positively charged particles emitted by radioactive substance like uranium, radium, etc. It is enclosed in a lead box so that it can produce straight stream of alpha particles and doesn't get influenced from the external radiations. Second part is the gold foil. The alpha particles got straight and hit the gold foil and the third is the circular zinc sulfide screen which enclosed the gold foil. As zinc sulfide is a fluorescent material so whenever a charged particle strikes it produces a glow. He used the gold as his experimental material because gold is highly malleable. Now let's see what observations he did in his experiment. The first observation he made was most of the alpha particles went undeflected and hits straight to the zinc sulfide screen producing the glow. The second was few alpha particles deflected by a small angle instead of moving in the straight line. Third was very few alpha particles deflected backward that is reversed to the path to the original path that it moved. So, what all conclusions he did from his experiment? First was atoms have a lot of empty space in it as alpha particles passed straight without any deflection. The second conclusion was as the mass of alpha particles is about 8000 times that of an electron, it was evident that the force which causes such large deflections was also very strong. Third conclusion he gave was, he called the central body of concentrated positive charge as nucleus since small deflections of alpha particles could only be caused by a center of concentrated positive charge that accounts for most of the atom's mass. The fourth conclusion was large deflections of alpha particles meant that the nucleus is centrally located. Fifth was the particles that directly hit the nucleus bounced back. And as a result, Thomson's plum pudding model was replaced by Rutherford's atomic model and this led to the discovery of nucleus of an atom. So, I hope the content of this video will be helpful for you all. Thanks for watching. Have a good day ahead.